One of my favorite definitions of community actually is that you know when you're in a community when you feel like you're welcome among strangers, right? Because a lot of us think about our friends and family as being our community, but actually if you walk into a room full of strangers and you feel welcome, that means that you're in, in a really powerful community that's meaningful to you. So groups has already become a really central part of the Facebook experience. I'm sure you've seen how on your platform you're seeing a lot more content from groups. You're seeing a lot more like recommendations about really cool groups that you can join in your, um, in your country or like based on your interests. And um, there, are, there are more than 1.4 billion people in the world who are using groups every month. So even as we're thinking about, I know you guys did the session on pages yesterday, but it's also really important to think about how many more people are using groups and also how the platform is being optimized for groups um, going forwards. And 400 million people feel that um, they're part of a group on Facebook which feels really meaningful to them. And so the way that we define meaningful is, is if you're part of a group that you feel like is meaningful to you, that means that group is a significant part of your day and a significant part of your well-being. So people come into this group and they feel like this is where they get support, it's where they feel connection to other people, and they feel like it's a really important part of their lives, actually. So um, a few months ago, so when we, Facebook um, repositioned to focus on Facebook groups, this was actually the biggest change on the Facebook platform in about five years. So this is something that's really serious and shows how much Facebook is investing in making community and Facebook groups the heart and soul of Facebook. So you'll notice how content is being prioritized, and you'll also notice that if you're not in a meaningful group yet, Facebook is making it easier for you to find one that is right for you. So I just want to show you a quick little video about this. There's nothing these ladies wouldn't do for each other. We're all here to help each other out. Wolf pack for life. We are back at the table. So I want to just do like a quick sense check. Um, so I already know that some of my like my community leaders are in the room, but who who's running a, a Facebook a, a group on Facebook? If you can just show show of hands. Okay, it's quite a it's quite a few of you. And how many of you are in a Facebook group that you feel like is meaningful to you? Nice, that is good to see. Um, so we um, beyond Facebook groups, like we talk when we talk about community. Um, Lots of people are talking about community these days, and so I think um, it's important to kind of really understand like what does community mean, and also community means different things across the world. So a lot of um, a lot of work that's been done in like the U.S. and Western Europe about communities is they're looking at how can communities solve for people being feeling isolated and disconnected. Whereas actually in places like many African countries, community is still like a really strong part of our lives and a really strong part of our like our social lives and how we connect with um, with our societies. So our team did some research when our team was set up a couple of years ago. We did some research into communities across the world and looking at like what are the common elements about communities everywhere in the world. And um, so these are the key things that we found out that essentially communities are about the relationships between people, right? Um, between a group of people. But what makes this a community and not just a group of people, right, is that in a community they feel like they have a strong sense of belonging to the people in that group. They feel connected to the people in that group. And they have a feeling of safety. They feel like this is a really safe place that they, that they trust. And so this is what they receive from, from the community. And what they give to the community, and this is really important, is what, if you're in a community, you also have to invest in that community as a participant. And so what you give to a community is you give trust, and you, give, um, and you invest in lots of different ways. It could be your time, it could be your money, it could be your knowledge, your resources. But a community is a, is a, relationship, is a two way relationship between um, the members in your community. So I want to give you, I just want to show you an example um, from Adidas about how they've built community around their, their business.
what I want you to think about when you are um, reflecting on that video is you can, see, you can really feel that sense of belonging, right? These are people who come together and they run as a crew, right? And you can see the investment that they're giving is they, they come together, they have to train for these like big races, they meet up every week, and they're doing this as a collective. They're not just training individually, they're coming together and investing, they're sharing their knowledge about running. You can also see how obviously this is connected to a brand. So for Adidas, the sense of belonging that they're giving you is that you're most probably all of them are wearing Adidas, right? Best believe they're wearing Adidas trainers and they're wearing Adidas t-shirts, but that also gives that sense of, sense of cohesiveness and a sense of a collective. So I actually, before we um, move into the breakouts, I want you to, having reflected on the, this video, I'd like you just to take a moment and just to think about a community that you feel like you're a, a part of and think about the, pl the places that you feel that you belong, that you feel like you invest in and that you feel like connected to in a similar way to the people, the runners that you can see in Adidas. So just, if it helps, you can close your eyes for a second. We'll just take five seconds to just close your eyes. You can take a deep breath in. Exhale and think about that place that you belong. Okay, you can open your eyes. Does anybody wanna shout out a community that they feel like that, that gives them that sense of belonging? Yeah, go ahead, tell us. Dev C, yes, definitely. And so you're wearing your, your Dev C t-shirts as well. That's a symbol of belonging. Love that example. Kameli, CLC? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> Where do you feel like you belong? Okay, um, a good example, CLC, Global Leads Group. Yeah. What about a personal example? Um, another community. Um, oh, you mean just personal as in me? Yeah, mm-hmm. Well, another one is um, Africa Open Science and Hardware. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else want to share where they where they feel like they belong? Um, developer circles. Developer circles. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. I saw a hand up over here. Okay, so I have two groups that I really love. Mm -hmm. um, first is Head Start Africa. Head Start Africa. Okay. Um, and the second is Silicon Africa. Silicon Africa. And what about those communities? Make do you feel like you belong to? Um, so Head Start Africa shares a lot of um, entrepreneurship and business tips for entrepreneurs. And so a lot of people have actually gained clarity, you know, in their business being in the group. And Silicon Africa is about tech, a lot about tech and sharing news around the world about tech. So businesses can, you know, get to know what's happening and how they can position themselves. Great. Thank you for sharing. I saw you had your hand up. NG Hub. NG Hub? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's really helped a lot, especially I'm a very shy person, but thanks mm -hmm. to them, they actually helped me overcome my shyness. Amazing. Kendra. There's, um, we'll take the last one at the back. Yeah, I think mine is three. One is um, the beverage room. Beverage room. Yeah, okay. it's a group about drinks and all of that. And I don't like drinking, so I love I love being a part of the community because I see lots of people who take different things and they make videos when they are passing out, and it's so fun. So <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy watching them. Okay, that sounds like yeah. a fun community. <laughs> yeah, very very fun one. And then the second one, of course, is my own group, Tales of Nigeria. And so basically, I have people sharing their everyday experiences to gain um, motivation and support in passing through whatever it is they are going through. And then the third group is the one he mentioned, um, Silicon Africa is really a cool group for exactly the same things you talked about. And I've gained lots of insights on the business side of, of, of running social enterprise from it, so yeah. Amazing, thank you for sharing. So the reason why I'm sharing these, um, these principles with you is because I think it's important, whether you're building a community online, whether that's on our platforms or on other platforms, or offline, this, these principles really give you a framework of being able to understand what mindset do you need as a leader of communities. And so this is what I would like for us to discuss today because all the, um, these principles are also what guides us from the, uh, the Facebook group's product team in terms of thinking about what features do we need to build in order to um, create more of these feelings of belonging and of connection and safety. So even when you're thinking about tactics on your group, it really comes from these principles and that's how the mindset that you need to go into thinking about how can I create more of this for my community. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use um, an exercise today called World Cafe. 
And basically, because this is an incredible opportunity that you guys have such different backgrounds and such different perspectives, you've traveled from all across Africa, some of you are developers and community leaders and entrepreneurs, it's a great opportunity for all of you to come and bring your um, diverse perspectives and think about these um, principles of community. So we're going to do, um, we have four different uh, breakout stations. And um, so you basically need to find a circle, so it's just first come, first serve, you need 10 people at each, um, at each session. And you'll have a, a scribe at each session who's basically going to take notes for you for the session. So the session isn't going to be facilitated. The point of the conversation is that you all are able to build this conversation amongst yourselves. And the conversation go wherever you would like it to go. That's the point of the conversation. So I'm just going to point out our scribes for you so you know where to go. So Chimdi is over there in the first circle over there. Um, Phil is right behind you in the circle just over there. Shayun is on that corner just over there, and Jana is in, in that corner over there. So everyone is gonna go to every station. So the first station that you'll go to, um, you'll be there for 10 minutes. Um, your scribe will tell you what the question is going to be. You'll have the conversation for 10 minutes, and then after that, we'll all get up and we'll move around to the next station. So you'll go through every single question, and then we'll come back quickly at the end and share and debrief um, a little bit. So I just want to say that um, please use your best listening skills while you're having this conversation. So for those of you who are um, really extroverted and like love like talking and really like dominating a conversation, this is an opportunity to step back a little bit and allow other people to have a voice. So please really remember to listen as well as to talk. And if you are a bit more introverted and a little bit quieter, this is your opportunity to share. So please um, lean in and make sure that your voice is heard in this conversation as well. So um, if you have any questions, I'll also be around and we'll let you know when you have two minutes to go for um, at the end of each session. And then some music will play and you'll know when to get up and to move around to the next sessions. Cool, so let us um, break out. So you just, for your first session, just grab a circle. Um, you just need to make sure that there's a ton of you at each, at each one. Anybody have any um, insights that they learned from the different conversations that you are going to take away that will change the way that you think about um, your communities going forward? Um, I basically train business businesses on how to use um, the platform for business and learning from the group experts in here, I mean lots of experts in here, I realized that we can actually um, become more human with our businesses or our groups and actually show uh, our true intents and be able to get a lot more value. And there are lots of techniques and patterns that I've been able to take down. How you tell your stories, how you uh, showcase some of the people in your group, um, how you encourage openness in the group. I mean, these things, um, you know, putting tactics behind each of these uh, things actually help you grow and earn the trust. Uh, like the um, five things that you put out there, you know, these are tactics that we can use to actually achieve some of those things. Amazing. Thank you for sharing. Um, who else would like to share an insight? Uh, so for me, I think what I remembered is that you, as much as you're a community leader, you are in a community being led by someone else. Yeah. So it's always good to remember what you love about that community that where you're not a leader and try and think about that as well when you're leading people so that you are feeding them with something wholesome because that's what you, what's got you in another community. So to always remember that it's not just, and then also that it's not just about 
giving a skill and giving, 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 but it's also got to be a two-way thing where people feel like they're appreciated in that space. Yeah. Yes, I love that. Thank you for sharing. Who else would like to share? The side is looking kind of quiet. <laughs> Go ahead. You can um, my key takeout from this was, I think, basically in every community, everyone should feel welcomed, and you should let them know that they matter, that they matter. So when they when they um, feel like you genuinely care about their growth, genuinely makes them comfortable. So you matter. Does anybody else have a, a learning that they would like to share? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, me, it's more about um, really liked the questions because um, no, it made me realize that um, with the right questions, you can build um, um, like anything that uh, is important for you. You make you can make it impactful. Like if you have the right questions, and that's really what um, I was uh, I was missing because I have uh, pages. Like, you know, they're all, like, we all have pages, uh, newsletters, a lot of people giving a lot of um, uh, content, but uh, I believe that uh, with, uh, with a group, you can, uh, you can be more impactful with conversations. That's it. To be rules. Yeah, so if you don't um, lay down the principles, everyone would do as they please, and it would be chaos. So you need to set down principles and ensure people stick to it and if um, you have those not abiding by those principles you get to um, um, engage them either you call them to order or you have punitive measures to um, create order yeah. um, did anything come up for anyone in the conversations that you were really surprised by I think two things, and uh, I think the first one was Tade uh, having difficulty <laughs> with the idea of being part of a community. And I, I think I agree to a little bit extend because for a lot of my high school and university days, it was just, you, you're part of these sort of necessary groups that you have to because either they help you uh, with study groups, uh, different groups or sports groups, but you don't really belong. It's just um, what you do, part of your routine. Uh, and so to a large extent, I agree with him that sometimes it's just really hard to find community, if, especially if you're someone who is doing so many different things or you have very diverse interests. And so all these different interests, it's just really hard to pin your identity or sense of belonging to one. And so that's part, uh, part of it. But the last part was, uh, last thing was, uh, I think we didn't really talk so much about rituals, idea of how do you, what are some of the things that you really do uh, to feel part, uh, part of a community, other than, of course, contribution and all that stuff. But there's, I think Tari couldn't explain a bit more about rituals, but uh, maybe you could. Tari, do you want to share? Do you want to share? Do you want to share, Tari? Do you want to share? What am I sharing? You're telling us about rituals, rituals and communities. Rituals. Yeah, that would make you feel part of community. Sunday at Rupert. I don't know. I have nothing to say. Okay, Kamali, would you like to speak? I'm not trying to call uh, Tadi out, but <laughs> he did say something that was uh, uh, very interesting. And if you think about it, uh, you see how like really, religious practices and symbolism um, can like mimicking some of these things within communities that we build or we set up can also help to build trust, bring people closer together. And so maybe study the practices in your churches and uh, mosques and other groups that you may belong to and see how you can build that into the routine of your community and bring people closer together. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, did you have something to add? Would you like to? <laughs> So Tadi doesn't sound like he wants to share about the actual practices, but like, but like for like 
rituals are a very important thing in community. So even if you think about um, handshakes, right, when you meet someone, that's a ritual that you do. Or if you go into church, when um, you, everyone knows if you're in the same church, like when is the moment to pray? There's usually a ritual about, so for example, in the Catholic church, how you um, bend down your knees and you on the cushion, that's a ritual that's, part, that's embedded and everybody who's part of the community knows to do those things. Um, and then like even the symbols that Gamelli is talking about, a great example of that is football clubs, right? If, you're, if you support um, Manchester United, you see another person wearing a Manchester United t-shirt instantly, you know that's a symbol of belonging and it's a, you know that you're part of the same team, basically. Um, does anybody else have anything they would like to share? We can take up one more learning or surprising insight. Um, yeah. yeah. So um, through the groups, what surprised me the most was, um, yeah, um, someone said they found screenshotting, like taking, a, taking screenshots, yeah, to be bad and I was quite surprised and taken aback because I think it saves lives. I think it just makes things easy, but that was what really surprised me. Yeah. Um, so um, there are people in groups who are in. Um, uh, okay, there are people in groups um, which are very vulnerable, and they share very confi confidential um, information. Like you share your story. Like um, she was. Um, Who is she? She was telling me about. Um, yeah, she was telling me about. <laughs> she was telling me about um, the group that she. Um, um, leads, which is um, they share about um, their abuse stories. So someone can just take a screenshot about someone's story and then share it on social media. And I don't, I don't think that is safe. And um, that content can, um, like, I think Facebook should just um, create something that prevents screenshotting. And maybe also um, one, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think um, ultimately it comes back to trust and accountability, which was one of the questions, right? Is that you're right, like if people need to feel that the information that they share in a group is confidential to that group. Um, and so, yeah, we wouldn't really encourage uh, screenshotting conversations. And that is definitely something that you need to think about in terms of your trust practices within, within your communities, for sure. Um, so just to round up the conversation. Wait, no, we, okay, can we, um, I think we should take the conversation offline though, just because we're on tight on time and we Sorry. need to close Sorry. the session. Um, but I did just want to let you all know that we will um, transcribe the notes and share them with all of you. But I'm sure there's like some great tips and tricks that I came out of the conversations that would be great for you to have. So we will definitely share those with you.